Resident Evil 5 simply can't be remade, at least not to the standards of Capcom's best work. And so the answer is not to remake, but to rewrite. A modern gaming audience. But all of this doesn't account for Resident Evil 5's most notorious problem. Racism. I was wrong about you, Senator. You're not cringe. You're just fucking racist! <laughs> Even with a vastly improved, more sensitive take on the continent, perhaps one with a black protagonist... I'm Blind Beard the Pirate! <laughs> hey, what's up guys? This is Thunderstruck115, and today, we are gonna be taking a look at a video trying to make the claim that Resident Evil 5 can't be remade because it's apparently too racist. Why? Because the basic-ass cannon fodder enemies are black, because the game takes place in Africa. And of course, this video comes from the absolute peak of gaming journalism known as IGN, because you can't spell ignorant without IGN. You know, it's actually kind of funny that this video released when it did, because I'm actually in the middle of my first playthrough of Resident Evil 5 with my brother, and it's a lot of fucking fun. The only other Resident Evil game I've played is the Resident Evil 4 remake, which I feel is important context since the first half of this video is about IGN bitching about the gameplay, despite them literally giving it a 9 out of 10 in their original review, likely just to pad this video out to that precious 8 minute mark so they can milk that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Now, I'm sure that somebody with more experience with the Resident Evil franchise can further explain the stupidity of the gameplay analysis, but that's really not what we're here for. But anyways, let's go ahead and get right into this shit. With Resident Evil 4's release last year, Capcom's project to remake the glory years of its survival horror series is complete. But as the game's post credit scene suggests, the remakes aren't over. And so the big question is, where next? The obvious answer is a remake of Resident Evil 5. But on the game's 15th anniversary, it's clear that moving forward chronologically will take Capcom's remakes into the series' weakest era, an era of gameplay and narrative decisions best left in the past. Resident Evil 5 simply can't be remade at least not to the standards of Capcom's best work. That's pretty fucking oxymoronic. If this is the weakest part of the franchise, then if anything, this makes it a prime candidate for a remake since it would be able to iron out some of the flaws with the game. A good example of this is Metroid 1 on the NES. It's by far the weakest Metroid game, at least as far as the 2D side-scrollers go, but in 2004, it got a remake in the form of Metroid Zero Mission on the Game Boy Advance, and it's easily one of the best games in the entire franchise. A remake of Resident Evil 5 could similarly elevate this game from some of its flaws like the clunky controls, Sheva's AI, and some of the irritating boss fights. Looking at you, Ouroboros Makono. And so the answer is not to remake, but to rewrite. You do realize that you can do rewrites in a remake, right? For example, the Resident Evil 4 remake rewrote some of the story elements and plot points to make the story a bit more coherent than the original GameCube version, and admittedly, I do think some of the elements of Resident Evil 5 could be similarly altered to make the plot a bit more coherent and memorable. But unfortunately, this is not the kind of rewrite that IGN is referring to, as we will soon see. Resident Evil is a survival horror series, not that you'd know that playing Resident Evil 5. Sure, it features a constant flow of horrific imagery, but Resident Evil 5 is an action game through and through. That's evident in its cover shooter mechanics, vehicle chases with on-rails turret sequences, and the constant rattle of assault rifles. Alright, this is where I have to start to question if the person that wrote this even played the game, because if they did, they would know that you don't get an assault rifle until about two-thirds of the way into the game. Up to that point, you get things like a pistol, shotgun, bolt-action rifle, and an SMG, but not a fucking assault rifle. Also, the cover mechanics they're referring to is that only a select few walls allow you to take cover behind them, which is not present in about 95% of the encounters in the game, and hell, even half of the walls that you can take cover behind aren't really in combat encounters, but rather are in certain sections that allow you to see certain hazards before progressing, such as that one ruined section later in the game that has the beam lasers. As for the turret sections, there's only one in the entire game, at least from what I've played, which I'm about 90% of the way through the game right now, and I'd argue that it isn't any more offensive than something like the minecart section in Resident Evil. 4. As a matter of fact, outside the changes that RE5 made to make the game more co-op oriented, it pretty much plays the same as the original RE4, which is about as action-packed as this game. Even its visual design evokes the sandy shades of modern military games that experienced mass popularity in the late 2000s. 
and that wasn't the case for Resident Evil 4, looking at that game, you can clearly see the very obvious gray and brown filter that it has, which looks like most World War II shooters, which were everywhere at the time of its release, and yet you never say anything about how that game was chasing trends. If anything, it's heralded as a masterpiece by literally everyone, so you might want to learn how to keep that same energy. It all speaks to a series that had lost its way. Rather than reflect on the tenets that were the foundation of its experience, Resident Evil Evil 5 looked to the contemporary gaming zeitgeist in an attempt to find a new lease of life. The result is an unholy hybrid of Resident Evil, Gears of War, and Call of Duty. Absolutely fucking not. Resident Evil 5 is a survival action horror third-person shooter where you have to constantly manage limited resources to get through encounters of mutated enemies that can be quite bullet spongy unless you utilize staggering and physical attacks much like Resident Evil 4. While in Gears of War, you are a literal roided out mass killing machine. Outside of being third-person shooters with the Xbox 360's trademark yellow piss filter, these two games are extremely different. It's as ugly and unwieldy as it sounds. This design appears to not just be a misguided attempt to follow Western successes, but also a misreading of its predecessor. With Resident Evil 4, director Shinji Mikami deftly reinvented the series through the use of a new over-the-shoulder camera angle. The perspective allowed for a more kinetic, action-heavy game. Despite this, Mikami never lost sight of the terror at the core of Resident Evil. Alright, I'm just gonna say this right now. Resident Evil 4 is not scary, and I don't see how anyone over the age of 9 would find it as such. While I haven't played most of the series yet, something I plan to rectify by the way, the general consensus that I could find is that the original trilogy on PlayStation 1 as well as their respective remakes and possibly Resident Evil 7 are scary, but the rest of the series, not so much. Through the use of enemies that were strategically placed to provide undulating waves of tension and fear, and the inclusion of Ashley as your vulnerable charge, combat encounters were focused on surviving overwhelming horrors rather than dominating foes. Resident Evil 5, meanwhile, presents its enemies as waves to be gunned down with increasingly powerful weaponry. Their purpose is cannon fodder, a wall of meat to slow your progress through levels. Once again, objectively false. The Magini in Resident Evil 5 function the same as the Ganados in Resident Evil 4, and they also have some pretty strategic placement. You have your regular enemies that try to swarm you, there's some enemies armed with grenades or crossbows, which are often placed on rooftops and ledges, some of them have these bat things spring from their head when they die, which gets you to adapt, there are these tanky brutes used for direct pressure, and sometimes the Las Plagas infecting them will spring from their heads and start spinning around doing area denial. Now, I'll agree that RE4, at least as the remake goes, is a bit smarter with enemy placement than Resident Evil 5, but to say that it's just a wall of meat is flat out retarded. <laughs> All this is to say that a faithful remake of Resident Evil 5 would break Capcom's seven-year streak of brilliant survival horror games. You might want to check your math there, because the remake of Resident Evil 3 was hated by most people, and that released back in 2020. Also, keep in mind what he said about remaking this game being bad, because it's going to be interesting in about a minute. <laughs> Remakes can, of course, completely redefine the structure of their source material. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, for example, is recognisably an updated version of the classic RPG, but its world design and gameplay mechanics are a world apart from the 1997 original. And so you could argue that Resident Evil 5 is actually the Resident Evil most in need of a remake. A whole new environmental structure and scenario design that reigns in the action and dials up the horror would bring it in line with Capcom's other remakes. You know, it's funny because just a minute ago you said that a remake of this game would break their streak of great survival horror games, and yet now you're saying that it can very much fix its issues. I swear, the only consistency you can find with IGN is that they're consistently stupid. But all of this doesn't account for Resident Evil 5's most notorious problem. Racism. Ladies and gentlemen, just brace yourselves for the amount of mental fucking gymnastics we're about to be exposed to. You might want to grab some alcohol to numb the pain from the terminal brain cancer you are about to receive. Set in a fictional West African country, Resident Evil 5's primary antagonists are black people. Yes, it's technically the Ouroboros virus that protagonist Chris Redfield is fighting, but the parasite's host is depicted as a nation of mobs and primitives who are violent even before their infection.
once again, I'm gonna have to ask if you actually played the fucking game, because if you did, you would know that the main antagonist in this game is Albert Wesker, who, last I checked, is pretty fucking white. The black people he's referring to are the native people of Kijuju, the fictional nation in West Africa that this game takes place in. And if anything, they're portrayed as victims in this game, since the Umbrella Corporation and later Tricell will test the next iterations of Las Plagas on these people, and the reason they're violent is because they're literally infected by a mind-controlling parasite that basically turns them into zombies. Which, funnily enough, this is something IGN gets wrong since they're infected with Las Plagas, not Ouroboros. As for being primitive and violent, motherfucker, Africa is full of third world countries. No fucking shit they're gonna seem primitive compared to a first world country. And a lot of those countries in question are constantly afflicted with poverty and war. I mean, what were you expecting? Fucking Wakanda? And even then, in the game itself, they're not even portrayed as violent until they're infected, so where's the fucking problem? What is the problem? Intentionally or not, Resident Evil 5 positions Africa as the Dark Continent, an uncivilized world harboring a diseased population that needs gunning down via Western intervention in the name of global security. And yet, not one of you motherfuckers at IGN had any issue whatsoever with gunning down hordes of American zombies in the original Resident Evil trilogy. Not one of you had an issue gunning down infected Spaniards in Resident Evil 4. It's only when they're black that they have an issue with it. My guy, the game takes place in fucking West Africa. Last I checked, the demographics of West Africa is predominantly black, so no shit the infective natives are gonna be black, you fucking troglodyte. Not once when playing Resident Evil 5 did I ever think, woohoo, I'm killing black infected enemies, woohoo, my racism. At this point, gunning down infected people with no hope of being saved seems like a pretty reasonable response for international security because otherwise, Wesker is going to use them as fucking bioweapons. Doesn't really matter what their fucking skin color is, that's the reality of the situation. This insensitive treatment of people of color was hotly debated even as early as Resident Evil 5's debut trailer, with writers such as Engai Kroll and Steven Totillo pointing out the game's uncomfortable post-colonial imagery. And it was just as retarded then as it is now. Also, maybe the reason the game has post-colonial imagery is because the game is set in post-colonial Africa. Wow, how fucking mind-blowing. The arguments and think pieces continued well into the game's release window, with IGN's own former editor-in-chief Hilary Goldstein having also wrestled with the subject. But that was 2009, a time when race was apparently a debate rather than a reality. Ah yes, race wasn't a reality in 2009. Only now is it a fact of life we all almost face, because I guess the past couple thousand years of human history just doesn't exist. If anything, I'd say race is more of a debate now than it was in 2009, because motherfuckers like you and other journalists keep trying to make it a debate. This isn't the fucking 1960s during the civil rights movement where racism was actually a huge widespread problem. By 2009 though, almost nobody gave a flying fuck about people's skin color, and that's largely true today for most normal people, but motherfuckers like you keep bringing it up to grift the top. In the 2020s, in a post-Black Lives Matter world, there is only one acceptable response to a white man shooting waves of Africans for an entire video game. No. Why does the skin color of the protagonist or the skin color of the enemies matter? This isn't a case where the game is trying to force some political agenda, it's literally just a game that takes place in Africa. If it didn't matter when a white guy went to Spain to mow down hordes of infected white Spanish people, then it shouldn't matter in Resident Evil 5 just because the enemies are black. On top of that, you can also play as a black woman protagonist in Resident Evil 5. Her name is Sheva Olimar, and yet you fail to mention that. And frankly, IGN, y'all have no room whatso fucking ever to be bitching about racism when y'all are the same company that went to bat to defend Sweet Baby Inc. after all of their blatantly racist actions and statements. Remakes may be able to redefine their source material, but there's only so many changes you can make until it's not a remake at all, but an entirely new game. And if you take Africa out of Resident Evil 5, is it Resident Evil 5 anymore? Even with a vastly improved, more sensitive take on the continent, perhaps one with a black protagonist and a more empathetic look at the outbreak, the experience would simply be too divorced from the original to hold the name Resident Evil 5. Perhaps one with a black protagonist I'm Blind Beard the Pirate! Oops. Holy shit, this video just gets more retarded the longer it goes on. This dude is really trying to insinuate that this game can't take place in Africa because the infected you would be killing would be fucking black. And then you ask for a black protagonist. 
I have no idea how you missed this, but one of the two main protagonists in Resident Evil 5 that are playable is literally fucking black. In fact, your editor literally fucking shows her in the footage. Somebody needs to fire whoever wrote this video. So where does Capcom go now? Ooh, ooh, I know the answer to this one. They should just remake Resident Evil 5 and not listen to what racist retards over at IGN have to say about it. Personally, I'd look backwards. Code Veronica is an ideal candidate, as is the original Resident Evil. But if the only way is chronologically forward, then a total rewrite of what comes next is the logical path. Because what followed Resident Evil 4 was not one terrible game, but two. Yeah, I fail to see how Resident Evil 6 being a good game or not has to do with a fucking remake of Resident Evil 5. Now, I haven't played Resident Evil 6 for myself, so I can't really comment on if it's a good game or not, but at the same time, that discussion is a completely separate one from whether or not Resident Evil 5 should get a fucking remake. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and end the video off here because the rest of it is fucking irrelevant. So I guess the key takeaway here is that the skin color of the enemies or the skin color of the protagonist in a video game it does not automatically make a game fucking racist. And the other takeaway is that IGN, and most gaming journalists for that matter, are absolutely fucking retarded and that you should never listen to them seriously. But yeah, that's gonna be about it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more and tell me what you think of IGN's stupid ass video. Anyways, that's it. Peace!